What is going on, guys? This is Ryan with the Loth Wolf Pack. This is the Loth Wolf Podcast, um, and this is kind of like a little special uh, episode of the Loth Wolf Podcast because I am only joined by Chris. What's going on, Chris? Yeah, little holiday special, you know, for the season. Yeah, we uh, so, we're yeah we're doing we're doing good. Yeah, we're off for work, so we were able to record uh, kind of during the day. Unfortunately, our our teammates here, Chris, or Bob and Jim, those are the regulars, and Casey and Levi, they were unavailable to record. Um, but we decided that we wanted to kind of get this out there because we've got some news to talk about um, with regards to not only a spoiler article that was released, but also, Chris, we got a soft release date for Covert Missions. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So you had said um, tentatively that January 17, 2020 is um, the anticipated release date for Covert Missions. Yeah, it's our first set in about, what, two and a half years? Um, but it was <laughs> Yeah, really, oh man. But yeah, January 17th, so according to some sleuths on the Discord, uh, they kind of figured it out because Fantasy Flight updated their website saying that Covert Missions was shipping. Um, and then some of the store owners were confirming with the distributor saying, yes, January 17th is the release date. So uh, maybe you heard it here first. Maybe you were on the Discord. I don't know. But January 17th, Covert Missions, be on the lookout for that. Pretty exciting stuff um, that we're going to get another meta shakeup. So our prime that we're going to play in January 4th is not going to be on the new stuff, obviously, because it won't be uh, released. But the prime that we're thinking about going to in Milwaukee, mm-hmm. February 2nd, that would probably be the first tournament that would be legal, uh, cover mission legal. So that could be a wild west of a tournament, which would be, in my eyes or in my opinion, and I'm sure yours too, the best case scenario. Yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. Uh, you know, whatever weekend this, you know, we're not the only ones that have a prime those weekends, obviously. So, you know, just those first couple of weeks in February are going to be pretty cool to see uh, what pops up around uh you know, around the prime, uh, the prime, uh, community. If you yeah, know. I always, I mean, I know as a, as a card player and as the star Wars destiny player in particular, I always get really kind of giddy during set release days and stuff like that. I just feel like you kind of, it's like a soft reset. Everything's fresh and new and no one knows what's going on anymore. Um, and so to just kind of play around with the new cards and stuff like that and see how they synergize with the old cards, it's always my favorite part of the of the cycle of release. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to covert missions release here. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, especially after not having new cards for about three years, it's going to feel pretty nice to have some new things to mess around with. Yeah, exactly. So looking, uh, to the spoiler article now turning our attention there, uh, we've got some juicy stuff that they released. This article came out, uh, d- December 18th. So about 10 days ago, Obviously, with the holidays and stuff, we were unable to get on the recording cycle sooner than we would have hoped, or sooner than now, I should say. But uh, we do have a lot of new things that were spoiled. Piloting looks like it's obviously we we knew piloting was going to be a big thing, but we it got a ton of support, a ton more than we could have imagined. And we like we kind of guessed on an earlier podcast, we did get Hera Syndulla spoiled. So why don't you take me around that card? What do you think about Hera and all the things that she can do? Yeah, sure. So when we just kind of go through her first, she's uh, she's now the seasoned captain. So she's kind of in the Rebel Alliance gear. In there for a while, you know, yeah. For this, for this card, yeah. So nine health. Um, she is a, <laughs> there's about 15 subtypes here. So <laughs> character, leader, pilot, specter. So a lot going on there with the subtypes. And then um, her die is one gun, two gun, focus, focus, dollar, blank. I guess I should have said she's nine points and 12 points for elite cheap. She has the, yeah, pretty cheap, pretty cheap. She has the piloting mechanic. And then she also has, um, kind of an attached R2 astromech to her, uh, to her text, which says after this character begins piloting a vehicle, you may spend two resources to ready that vehicle. So pretty oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I think like you said, maybe the, one of the most crazy things is, She's nine points and 12 points. I mean, that's pretty, pretty cheap for having that, you know, Sienna Re type R2 astromech ability um, on demand when you want it, you know? I mean, yeah, I, I, I am so excited about Hera. Um, I know that we're getting a ton of Spectre support um, and we've kind of gotten a bunch, like we had Sabine spoiled, we had the Ghost spoiled. I can only imagine at this point, I mean, the only teammate that we don't have in rotation is Kanan. So whether we get him this set or next set, I would, I would assume we're getting another Kanan soon. So we'll be able to play the entire Spectre lineup um, 
And we've kind of the theme of mm-hmm. the Spectres being cheapies and being able to be played three wide together. Uh, very thematic. It's very juicy. I love that. Um, but taking a look at Hera in general, I think she's going to be great. I mean, I, I know I've read a couple play, places online or some sure. people in the Discord kind of think she's just meh or she's okay, nine health, whatever. I look at her and I think she's going to be really, really strong, especially with that ability to to re-ready a vehicle. Yeah, I, I mean, that just that's crazy. Yeah, like like you were saying, I, I definitely beg to differ. I think she's going to be pretty good. Um, you know, that die is just anything you can want at all times. And like you said, you know, in the early game, you don't really need to spend the $2 necessarily. But then later on, when you're all set up, you just have this thing ready to go to get multiple activations off. So, um, you know, it's definitely she's definitely really, really yeah, good. And like early game, like she's got a two range side, so she can pump if she needs to pump. Yeah, like exactly. It's, if you're exactly, not focused yeah. on the ability, it's it doesn't matter. She can still do damage. I see her as like if we're talking about three wide lineups, I see her as more of the, the one die in the five die. Uh, yep, just to get yep. that passive ability, mm-hmm. um, but who knows? I mean, this yep. this she could end up being really. I think she's gonna be a big player. I think obviously Spectre's got a lot of uh, support, and they, I mean, presumably will get more support uh, once the full set is spoiled. But I just think that she is just awesome. And then, yep. I mean, we already already talked about the ghost, but her synergy her synergy with the ghost, which is a three cost mm-hmm. vehicle. So the ghost is ambush. After you activate this, you can activate a Spectre. So you activate, you play down the ghost, you have ambush, but then you get to activate a specter. So you activate Hera. Then with her piloting ability, you activate the ghost and then you still have ambush. And then after you resolve that die, the ghost die, you can give each character piloting the spectre shield. So you can. Pre- yeah, it's pretty, pretty nasty. Yeah. yeah. If you've got five resources or, I mean, if you're playing tech team, you play the ghost, you activate her, you have ambush, you resolve, you give her a shield, you spend two resources and you're ready to ghost again. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Right. <laughs> And um, what was I going to say? I guess to think about piloting too, I guess not that it really matters that much, but even if she resets the vehicle, you know, she's still piloting that vehicle, even though it's getting reset, yep. you know? So you could potentially get two right. shields um, if you resolve the die off the ghost twice, you know? Yeah, that's that's gross. Yeah. All right, so moving on from Hera, me and you are both high on her. I think she's going to be a player. We go to kind of Sabine. Sabine was already spoiled, so we're not going to really talk about her, but we do have Sabine's TIE Fighter. So it's uh, the hero, yeah. <clears throat> excuse me, the hero TIE Fighter. It's two cost, has ambush. Uh, it's a one range, a plus two, a plus two uh, range, that is, one disrupt and one resource blank. After this die modifies a specter die, you may discard a card from your hand to roll it into your pool or roll the die into your pool. So pretty good for a two cost. Um, I know modified sides aren't necessarily the most desirable, but for a two cost yellow hero vehicle, I think it's uh, it's pretty fine for what it does. Yeah, I would I would think it's pretty good. And especially with that option to you know, get the die back in the pool again. You know, as we've all seen now, the you know cards that have the ability to get multiple resolves by themselves, regardless of what the clause is to do that, you know, Vader's fist, uh, Chewbacca's blaster, you know, these cards are generally above the curve. Um, but like you said, though, this one does have modified sides on it. So it may, maybe takes that down just a little bit, but, um, you know, multiple resolves are definitely nothing to overlook. Yeah. I think they had to have the, the modified just to keep it kind of in check. So you have to have yeah. di- dice to pair with, or also it would have been bananas, but pairs really well with Zeb. Yeah, yeah. Pairs really well with Zeb. That's true. Um, That's true. Going along with the Sabine theme, they released a card called Custom Paint Job, which has probably one of my favorite art like art styles that I've seen in this game. It's one of my favorite cards just visually that I've seen. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. Um, so it is an upgrade mod. It's a zero cost. Uh, after you play this upgrade on a vehicle, obviously, choose a color. Attached vehicle and its die become that color, then reroll up to two dice. So the new mechanic of changing a card color yeah. has now entered the fray. What do we th- what do you think about that? I think it's pretty cool. Um the reroll up to two dice for free uh is pretty good. You know, it can be your dice or the opponent's dice. Doesn't matter, it doesn't say. So I think that's pretty strong. And then um, you know, clearly with the Sabine special and wanting to have um the three color of die out there. Um, you know, clearly this is meant for her uh, to kind of get that special active or at its highest uh, potential. 
Yeah, so we get into the point now where it's where like, you know how we always look at a card and it's like, okay, clearly this card was supposed to be for this deck. Like Ewok Ambush was supposed to be for the Ewoks, but it's now in Droids. This card was supposed to be in a Sabine mm-hmm. deck, right? This card is going to be featured in a Shadowcaster deck, and it's just going to be a way for Shadowcaster to just yeah. get discounted sides so easily. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's just gonna, like you said, it's going to turn the Shadowcaster online way earlier, and then once you find your other ones, you have the option to, you know, overwrite into you know, triple laser turret or dorsal or whatever you want yep. to put on there. But no, I do like the the potential of switching colors and all that stuff. I think it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely, I'm, I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if that's something they, uh, you know, beyond just Sabine and, and her card, if that's something that they continue to explore or not moving forward, but definitely a cool mechanic. Yeah. And uh, the one thing I like about it, you don't have to switch the color. It doesn't say you have to choose a different color. So like True. if anything, if you have that card, it's just a free reroll. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. yeah yeah true so you play the mod yeah, and like just... you said with the, with the shadow caster you you can just roll the shadow caster first and then put it yep. down after and then re-roll it if you know so that's pretty kind of gross awesome. yeah all right so the last specter card yeah. that we got uh is potentially busted um this is this this card makes me nervous a little bit uh <laughs> it is specter cell it is a plot include yeah. only if each character on your team is a specter and it is negative one <laughs> Negative one point. Negative yeah. one point for Spectre Cell. Include only if each of your characters is a Spectre, and you get another point to play with. Um, yeah, pretty pretty crazy. Thirty one. So points. I love it because it's thematic, and you want to play these guys together, and they're all cheapies, and they all synergized with different cards and stuff like that. But cards that discount like this, especially we've seen abilities now for. Sabine, Zeb, we just got a point reduction, so now he can presumably become a 10-13 with this card. Uh, we know what Chopper can do. We've got two versions of Ezra to play with, and now mm-hmm. new Hera, potentially a new Kanan. Um, all those cards are pretty good with all the support they're getting. So to discount them by one makes me a little bit wary. It makes me a little bit nervous, but I like it overall just as a thematic kind of card. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I agree. It's definitely interesting, too, that you know with chopper and the two different ezra's and then zeb and sabine and hera you know potentially there's a lot of different ways to build the specter deck so it'll be cool to see um you know the different types and maybe you know some are going to be piloting centric obviously with hera and sabine but maybe you don't even do that and you just play zeb and ezra and chopper or something you know if the math works out that way i haven't really added it up but um it could be cool to have different types of decks within the same uh subtype the specter stuff you know yeah it's really cool and like each one of them kind of brings their own little flavor like you said which i really enjoy so like uh, an ezra or a zab centric deck is very different than a hera centric deck mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so it'll be cool to see and mess around with the different uh different combinations yeah i like that that's really cool so moving now to kind of the the villain side of the spoilers um we were given a couple new pilots on their side and a couple of event cards that are neutral that i think are really good so we'll start with mm-hmm. the character that we got and I, i'm assuming this guy's from resistance did you did you confirm that yes i have heard on the roll on podcast that they said that this guy's from resistance so i'll take their word on that okay. yeah yeah i assumed it so we have elric von reg i'm von assuming reg. i'm von reg pronouncing yeah. that <laughs> correctly he is the major baron Ooh. apparently Ooh, yeah, yeah. he's he's I mean, he's obviously earned that title. That's a big right, title. Right. <laughs> uh, so he's a 12 health thick boy. He's, he's a big boy. Yeah. yeah uh, 12 health. He's 13, 16. So a little expensive, but, you know, he's not too mm-hmm. too pricey where people are going to look away. Uh, mm-hmm. One range, a two range, a three range for a dollar, a one disrupt, one resource blank. He has piloting. He's a character pilot. Uh, well, while one or more of this character's character dice are in your pool, its piloted vehicle support and upgrade dice cannot be removed by opponent's effects. Whew. So he's got like built in TLT yeah. action there, except it protects cool. more than that. Yeah, right. It's definitely pretty strong. Um, you know, I guess to compensate for that, they kind of gave him this like measly disrupt side on the die. Um, but, you know, overall, it's definitely a really cool effect um, for. Um, for the you know to emphasize the piloting obviously so i think he's pretty cool i i really like him too and i'm not one to play like i don't know for whatever reason this style of character is kind of not the one that i've uh, ever kind of 
fallen in love with, but mm-hmm. I I think he's really strong and I think he's going to be really good. I mean, just the fact that you can't remove the vehicle or mod dice on him is is pretty mm-hmm. or on his on his vehicle, obviously. But I, I don't know. I, I think he's really cool. I think he's really strong, and he he's got three range, so he doesn't even need a vehicle in order to be effective. I mean, he's he can roll smoke. He's got basically a Zeb die. True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, something with um with Elric and um what's the uh yellow hero resistance girl? Um Oh uh spoiled. yeah, the, the anime yeah. girl. Yeah. Oh uh Tora. Tora, 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 Tora Doza. Yeah. So I was thinking about this after we did our last podcast. So, you know, generally speaking, you know, I don't mean this to offend anyone, but resistance generally is targeted towards like a younger audience. Correct. Right. I think that's fair to yeah. say. So, you know, I think it's cool how when they introduce these resistance, resistance characters, so Toradoza and Elric, you know, if, if there's younger people that can maybe get drawn into destiny via these resistance characters, you know, they're making these characters definitely cool and playable, but they're not overly complicated to where they're going to be confusing people that are maybe kind of using these as a gateway to get into the game. You know, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the, who's the main character from resistance? I couldn't tell. Isn't Poe in that show? Poe's in it, but I know that there's like some young hotshot kid. That oh, okay. like, that's is like, like the main character. Yeah, I, I don't think it's, I think Tora might be like the second one. I, I know there's a young, I want to say his nickname is like Kaz or something like that, but I know he's, oh, okay. He's uh he's a main character. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming if we're gonna get these two guys, if we're gonna get Tora and, and Elric, and I think uh, was it Pyre, the the golden stormtrooper? I think he's in it too. Oh yeah, he's a resistance. So I'm too, assuming yeah. we're gonna get uh yeah. like the main or the main characters like Kaz or something like that. But sure. yeah, that's a really good yeah, point. Sure. I never even thought about that to kind of start appealing towards the the younger audience. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's just you know, like I said. Tora and Elric, you know, they're they're clearly highlighting the whole piloting mechanic, but it's not anything that's going to be, you know, ghost trigger 15 triggers and reset people and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So if there's like some, you know, younger kids and you want to say, hey, do you know Tora Doza or Elric? And it, we're going to be battling with these ships and their pilots and all this stuff. It can kind of just be a nice thematic way to maybe introduce some people to the game. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's a great point. So moving to Elric's uh, tie interceptor here, I think this yeah. thing's this thing's vicious here. So Elric von Reg's tie interceptor. It's a unique three cost support vehicle. Uh, it is at two range, a plus three range, two indirect, Oof. three disrupt, one yeah. one resource blank support vehicle action. So not a power action action. If Elric Von Reg is piloting this support, remove this die to discard an opponent's vehicle from play that costs equal to or less than the value showing on this die. Yeah, that's that's pretty hot. I mean, it's vicious, like uh, especially in a world of potentially having piloting being one of the top archetypes. I mean, yeah, right. Having that, you know, possibility as an action, like you said, to maybe if you can roll a two or a three on him and then blow up two things. Like say against the ghost or um, Sabine's Tie Fighter, I mean that's pretty insane. Yeah, that's. I mean, his three disrupt side blows up the ghost. Yeah, right, right. Because you don't need you don't need range, and plus they can't even do anything about it if if Elric has dice in the pool. Yeah, they can't you could just them. let that three disrupt just stay there, and then right. blown up. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Um, on the roll in podcast, they had mentioned if you had like the super anti uh, vehicle deck of Elric and Mahler Mythel together. Oh God! And, you're, and then you're really blowing up vehicles like all over the place. But. <laughs> it's like such a niche deck where it's like if you don't run into <laughs> if you don't run into a vehicle deck, you're like okay, all my cool stuff doesn't matter. But yeah, you do Mythel, nothing. I think Mythel's good. <laughs> like Mythel and the Black Two are just they're good. They're just so underplayed. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, maybe now with the pilot, maybe he kind of gets a bump up too. But, yeah. you know, maybe maybe not in such a narrow package as Elric and Mahler Mythel, but, you know, just him in general. For and, sure. You know, see some more play. So do you see but, do, you, do you see them retroactively going back now and giving characters piloting like they kind of did with, you know, the Legacies guys? They all got, oh. uh, they all got titles and yeah. whatever you want to call it. Right. Yeah. I don't know about adding the mechanic to the card itself. Yeah. Um, but maybe the subtype could be more of a thing too but 
you know, just kind of going off that last spoiler article, how, you know, Jeremy said he doesn't want to errata cards. Um, yeah. But, you know, I don't know if they do that or not, but it would be kind of cool to give Mauler missile piloting. You know, That's what I'm that's saying. Like, if, <laughs> if he gets piloting, he's going to be more playable than he is now. I mean, there, there probably isn't that many cards, really, that have that would need it. Like maybe the like have the yeah like right. we already got a new Poe so they don't have to do it to the old Poe but like Mahler would be a good mm-hmm. candidate um and just characters yeah. like that and I guess too if you're gonna add something to an errata like adding a keyword like piloting is probably one of the more simple things that they could add on there you know it's not like you're changing the verbiage of the card in any way yeah and it's it's I even think it's simpler than like callus got leader trooper you know what i mean like and if i'm playing callus at a table against mm-hmm. especially a newer player and i put a riot shield on callus then i have to explain to them well right. you know sorry i know it doesn't say it but he right. is versus hey this guy's a pilot he can do this stuff yeah for sure that's a good definitely a good point so yeah that'd be cool if they did but i don't know i mean yeah it's almost like do it but also at the same time all those cards are going to rotate out so just kind of let them rotate just leave it alone but yeah i don't know who yeah. knows but I definitely, I definitely like the um, the interceptor. I just kind of like the black too. I don't think you know you're probably not going to play that unless you have Elric in your squad because otherwise it's just a yeah, three cost with a big die, you know. But it's definitely thematic. And cool. Yeah, I, I think it's really good. I mean, who knows? I, I, it could be played in non Elric decks, but I think Elric is so good that I think he's going to be played. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then yeah. I think his interceptor is an auto, at least one of, potentially even a two of, because it's so yeah, good. Just to make sure you have it, yeah, for sure. All right, so now we have a little generic guy, so non die card. Um, it is a villain seven health six coster. Uh, it is the Imperial Pilot. He is a character pilot. He has the piloting mechanic and his power action. If this character yeah. is playing a red vehicle, turn its support die to any side. Man, I think he's really awesome. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So we've seen the Imperial Pilot now, a six coster for seven health. We've also seen the Pike Sentinel, a six coster for seven health. So they're definitely trying to push the envelope here on, you know, giving these little wimpy battle droid characters um, a little bit more life and relevance into the competitive scene. Cause I think this guy's really good. I think. I agree. And just a red splash too. getting like, I mean, if just off the top of my head, best defense is really good with him just because it's like, you know, if he dies, my deck's not dead, but I can eat two mm-hmm. dice for three health. I mean, why not? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I think he's really cool. Like one, one pairing that I've kind of been toying with on the DB was, um, uh, elite Watto and then elite Watt Tambor. So that's 24 points. Oh, so nice. Get all, just get all the money and then you can swap in this guy for the battle droid. And I would say in that type type of vehicle, Watt Tambor deck, this guy's better than a battle droid, you know? Yeah. I mean, all these red, these red ships and stuff, Watt is going to be relevant again. And this guy kind of pairs really well with like, if you can get like his, like Elric's tie down with Watt, roll it in and then you're piloting it with the guy, you just flip to whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's really cool. Yeah. Pretty sweet. I agree. So then now we're moving on to an event. It's a neutral gray. And I think this is probably one of the best late game cards that they've ever printed. I think it's so good. Um, Eject. So it's ambush. After you play this card, gain an action, obviously. It's a zero cost gray neutral. Discard a vehicle you control to heal two damage from one of its piloting characters and give that character two shields. So you are, it's a four health swing for zero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're using two cards for four health, yep. basically. Yeah. So, you know, that, that rate is probably about average. Um, you know, if you think about first aid, or not first aid, well, I guess first aid, but um, field medic and riot shield and armor plate, you know, generally one resource for two health is kind of like average for healing or blocking sure. type stuff, you know? So, you know, instead of paying the resource and a card, you're getting a zero cost for two cards to get, you know, four health. But like you said, I think it's really, really cool, uh, cool card. And definitely, like you said, late game, um, a really good card to just kind of give you four more health to kind of push through damage in a support deck. Or even if you have pod racers, the generic one cost pod racer, Mm -hmm. you're just putting one resource down. You got a guy piling a pod racer, you blow it up because it doesn't matter. And now you're giving four health because of it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. I think it's really, really cool. That's that's sick. I mean, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Like you were saying with something like pod racer, like I think it's really good, you know, as you alluded to in like something that's like a wide 
small vehicle deck because you're not really going to care as much for discarding like a TIE fighter or a pod racer. And you still have five vehicles out to maybe do stuff, you know, win the game in that next round with that four extra health that you're getting. Yeah. Like if it's late game and this card is relevant, you probably don't need whatever vehicle you're destroying in order to win anyway. So it's Mm -hmm. like this card would be, it would be a little bit, you would think about it more if it was like destroy a vehicle and exhaust the piloting character to do this. You know what I mean? I know that it's a little bit steep, right. but that would be, I would think about it a little bit more like, eh, do I really want to exhaust it a little bit? Like, is it worth it? But with just destroying the vehicle, there's, I feel like there's no question. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's definitely, uh, you know, beyond, um, beyond us seeing it in play and kind of figuring out if it's actually worth the slot or not, it's definitely a sweet design on ejecting out of a vehicle. So yeah, it's, that's pretty great. Cool. I love it. Yeah. So moving on to another event, we have a neutral one cost red event. Uh, it's called a sale. A sale also has ambush. I've noticed that a lot. I don't know about you, but a lot of these cards have ambush again. So they're kind of bringing that back too. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's not like the weapon mm-hmm. ambush where Satine can get or Sabine can get broken. It's a lot of event ambush, which it's pretty cool. Spot a piloted vehicle to remove a die. It's like a uh, pin down. Boom. It's got to be great, I would imagine. It's going to be in every piloting yep. deck for sure. It's not so, bad. Um, but like you were saying with the ambush, it seems like um, you know if they're anticipating more of a wide vehicle style deck to be at least playable, possibly even you know very competitive. It is cool how they're giving ambush to maybe kind of keep up in actions just a little bit for those decks, you know. Yeah. So. Maybe it can give you some play to kind of maybe have the battlefield if you really want it or not. I mean, flying wise, it makes sense. Like you should have ambush when you're flying around because that's what you do. That's true. (laughs) Yeah, you're zooming around and you're destroying die and you're claiming the battlefield. Quick. That's why it's. Yeah, I think that I think this card's really good though. I agree. I mean, spot removal is always the best, and there's no like, there's no any or there's no other uh, what's it called Um, limitation on it. Just hey, spot a pilot vehicle, remove a die, boom. Yeah, like you said, it's just the it's the modernized version of pin down. Just a little bit more of a specific clause, but um, you can ambush for for having that more specific clause. So I think it's really hundred really percent. Cool. I love it. And then the last card we got for the spoiler article, we have licensed to fly. Uh, it's a one cost red neutral upgrade. Attached character gains pilot and has piloting. So everybody becomes pilot. Everyone just gets promoted right on the spot. Hmm. Let's just play five in every deck and just make everyone pilots. Put it on your opponent's characters, whatever. It don't matter. <laughs> so this is this is our solution, I guess. Instead of going back and retroactively giving Mauler Mythil piloting, this is it. Sure. It's uh it's definitely I feel like it's probably something that they were like, we're just gonna make this card because it's kind of just necessary to have in the card pool. But as far as it being good enough to play. I'm not so convinced on that, at least at the moment. Like it would be like, we'll yeah, see. my my thought process would be, so if I'm playing, let's just go to the Spectres. Let's say I'm playing Chopper, Sabine, Hera. And Sabine and Hera already have piloting and you want an end game for if they kill the other two, Chopper's left by himself. This is the opportunity to Chopper piloting so you're not losing a lot of value if Sabine and Hera go down. That's true. I mean, I don't know. Like like you said, I don't think it's going to be viable. It's cool that it exists. Mm. Like what cards like this? Mm. We've had Nate Hood. We've had, uh, I'm trying to think. We've had the game. I guess Bounty Hunter Mask kind of falls in that category. That's a little bit better because of Django's synergy. It gives a health. But yeah, you're right. Right. Like Nate Hood never saw play, even in Asso decks. Um, So. Yeah, the only only person who played Nate Hood was, uh, didn't Magnuson play it in his Raylo deck? Oh yeah, Con or something or give a shield, yeah, because it gave a shield. So it didn't he wasn't doing it to gain yeah. Jedi. It was just do it because it zero get a shield. Yeah, but as far as this license to fly, like if it costs zero, I think I'd be a little bit more on board with it. But a dollar in a card just to give piloting seems like a pretty steep cost. So like like you were mentioning, you're really gonna want to in your deck. There's really gonna be a vehicle you want to leverage to pilot it in order to play this card in your deck, I think, but it's a cool card, but I'm just don't think competitively. It's not like the best card, you know? Agreed. And just, I mean, it's, it'll be cool in draft. You know what I mean? Like you get it in draft and it's like, Oh, I got this. I'm going to make Kylo Ren a pilot. Um, But yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's probably not the best. And like, if if you're going out of your way to play this card, just build a team that has piloting anyway. Why do you need to play this card? (laughs) Like, At the right, character right, exactly. choice, you can say, hey, I'm going to do piloting, 
I'm not going to pick anybody other than a guy that pilots. Yeah, right, right. But yeah, it's a cool card, cool art. I like it. Yeah. So overall, what are we? Are you more sold on the piloting mechanic? I, I think was it you or maybe it was Jim that wasn't sold on it completely yet. Um, oh, I mean, I, I like it. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, it is it is interesting that they definitely have these. I mean, these hate cards like Dusk and Mahler Mistel and Elric Von Rig, they're all in, you know, available to the card pool. But I guess, and Darth Vader, I guess, kind of falls in that category, kind of, sort of, the new one, uh, the pilot Vader. Victor Leader. Yeah, Victor Leader. Um, but you know, I think those are probably necessary cards to have in the card pool, given that they're really pushing this support meta, you know? Um, so do you do you think that Desperate Measures now becomes a necessary evil, or do you still, like, for me... I'm more warming up on the fact that it exists. Like I'm not yeah. completely hating it, but I still think it's going to take away a lot from piloting decks. Sure. I think it's going to be kind of like we've seen in the past, just one of these big cycles to where, you know, in the beginning, let's say everyone wants to try these piloting decks. And if one is really good, that's going to cause desperate measures to rise up and then push those decks out of, you know, people playing them. And then once that happens, then people are going to realize, okay, I don't need desperate measures anymore. And it comes out and then it's, it starts all over again, you know? So it's going to be kind of a cat and mouse game of choosing your deck for the tournament for that specific weekend. And I think that's actually pretty fun. That's pretty cool. I like those decisions as well. Yeah. I just, I think it would be more of a decision. I know we talked about it, potential nerfs and stuff like that. If, If you had to pay resources or pay maybe half of resources based on their support, um, Mm -hmm. I think that Mm -hmm. would have been a little bit more fair, but sure. I do like the fact that it exists because something has to keep these things in check. And I don't think Elric and his tie are going to be, <laughs> are going to be like not the gatekeepers that are like, Oh, I hope no one's running Elric's right. tie. At the tournament. Sure. Uh, and desperate I guess, measures is that hard. Yeah. I guess too, to kind of go back to the, the meta itself, if they're, if they're kind of having these support decks be more of a wide thing, then desperate measures. Sure. It's still good in those matchups, but it doesn't have the insane impact as say versus the shadow caster deck where you're in t- you're just, you just lose. You yeah, know? just lost. Yeah. Yeah. Like you still have other supports to play and they're still going to take indirect damage for blowing up your vehicle. So I think in that aspect, you know, maybe wide vehicles can still play into desperate measures, but it'll be hard to say until we get the cards and give them some, uh, some test drives. I think the specters do a really good job too, because I think that with the kind of the lineups that we've seen so far, you're not all in on Hera's ability. So like you can mm-hmm. you can presumably play a three wide specter deck with Chopper, Ezra, and Zeb and just go all melee route. Or you can have Hera as the one die and if they if you're against Yellow Villain, you just okay, I'm gonna go melee or I'm gonna go aggro guns. I don't right. have to play the ghost in order to win this matchup. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda like a hybrid deck where you have the option to play it. If you're not facing against yellow villain. Yeah, you can win different different routes. It's just you right. don't you don't you're not all in, like you said, you're not all in on like the Shadowcaster plan where it's auto loss if you get blown up. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah, desperate measures, hull breach is the other card. Hull um, breach. But top of my head, I think that's kind of it, right? Like hull breach measures, Mahler Mythal, Vader, kind of. I mean, then you get like vandalized and stuff, but vandalize, if you oh, get yeah, vandalized, yeah, that's, that's your fault, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. That's, that is your, it's on you. But yeah, Desperate Measures, Aider, Hull Breach. And uh, Elric. I wish, I wish there was, if we got a reprint of Shield Generator, that would be. <laughs> that might be a little too good. <laughs> it, it was so good, but yeah, it's still like. It, Maybe they make it cost like three or something. Yeah, like, even I don't a two know. cost support. Like that's still, you're still playing like five in order to get the ghost out. Just, you just have a little added that's security. True. That's true. But overall, definitely like the article, definitely like the spoilers. And now that we have, you know, a uh, release date within three weeks here, that's pretty yeah. exciting stuff. Really exciting. I like the I like where we're going with the game. Um, we've got our prime next week. How do you feel about that? Uh, a little underprepared, but um, go, yeah. going in with a little more of just a, I'm going to just try to do my best and have fun. Still going to win, but I'm not like as stressed out about it as I, as I was last year i guess but um definitely looking forward to it for sure do you think you're gonna gear up more for like the february one or what do you with uh, covert missions being a thing well i think with the release of covert missions just naturally you know we're all gonna be a little bit more juiced up to play so i think you know that kind of is probably half of it is like uh we've been playing these cards for so long i'm just gonna go and have fun on on january 4th 
But uh, yeah, with a new medal, it'll definitely be cool to try to establish something at that tournament and bring something that maybe um, isn't com- in, or bring something into a meta that isn't completely figured out yet. So that would definitely. definitely be cool. And as of right now, we are streaming the event, correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. January that. 4th. Yeah. January 4th pastime store in Niles, Illinois. So we have been given the go ahead to stream the event. Um so we're looking to hash out those details with the store and the store owner. So um, be on the lookout for that. Yeah, um, I will. Uh, we'll definitely have our YouTube going. Um, we have, for those of you guys that follow the podcast, I'm sure you're obviously on YouTube because that's where we post. Um, but we'll probably have a live stream there. Um, and then I am going to work on mm-hmm. the Twitch intricacies. So I'm going to try and get a set up on Twitch. So hoping to have it kind of simulcasted on both Twitch and YouTube. Um, and Great. if you guys are followers on discord and any of the major discords i will post a link to our twitch and youtube channels kind of the day before or the day of uh so you guys can follow along and if you're just a youtube user we'll probably make a view of an announcement video or something like that for setting up the link and stuff like that so like chris said be on the lookout for that january 4th i believe the tournament starts at 11 or noon do you know yeah it's like noon i think so something like that if you yeah. want to follow us along just be on the lookout for the the live stream on the fourth yep all right so chris thank you for joining me here uh, and talking destiny do you have any parting words for the the fine folks listening at home oh i guess just uh again thanks for listening happy holidays and if you happen to watch our uh kind of channel brand change video um that's kind of a pretty exciting thing for the past couple weeks and we certainly hope to keep bringing uh bringing the content to you when we can. So thank you guys. If you guys haven't gotten a chance to yet, please check out the other videos on our YouTube. There are great uh, videos for new and experienced players. Uh, Chris and Jim and them have been doing live streams recently, uh, hoping to get a big live stream soon, actually. So be on the lookout for that as well. But if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, anything that you guys want to see from us, please do not hesitate to uh, comment on this video or send us a message. We're very good at responding to all five of our fans so make sure that you guys are make sure that you guys are uh, just giving us suggestions because we'd love to give you guys the content that you want to see and that's kind of what our our channel is all about so on behalf of chris this is ryan uh thank you guys for listening and until next time loath wolf pack 